Uh, the first time I encountered Webby was not in person. It was over emails. I um, when I when I got the job at SNY, and I'll go back and tell you the other the other story later. But when I got the job at SNY, um, it was in large part because I wanted to to learn from Webby because I had heard of him during the World Series and, and heard his name obviously. And so when I got the job at SNY, I um, sent him an email. And I said, you know, a long, a long email, a couple paragraphs, and I said, I look forward to learning from the best. And I remember Webby, all he wrote, he wrote back right away, and all he wrote back is, I am and you will. So wow. that, became, that became kind of a running joke in the truck for the next decade plus, where Webby would just say, I am and you will. But I, I was, uh, when I was in college, I had worked for ABC as a runner, and I had interned on local baseball. Where? And uh, for the Oakland A's, I grew up in the Bay Area. So I, I was aware of the director position and I knew I wanted to be a baseball director. And I remember uh, when I was in college at Oregon, I watched the end of a World Series game just to hear Joe Buck say the director's name, just so I could hear who the director was. I heard him say Bill Webb's name. So fast forward, you know, four, four years or so, when I was interviewing for the job at uh, SNY, a low associate producer job, uh, the executive producer mentioned, oh, and Bill Webb's going to direct our baseball games. And that right there for me, I was like, I got to jump at this. And I, gotta, and I said to myself, I got to get him to teach me to, to do baseball. And now, uh, 12 years later, I'm, I'm uh, doing the Mets. And, uh, were you a tape producer? I was the graphics producer, the graphics associate producer. Then I was his AD, the tape producer, for nine years. So I did uh, about a thousand games with with Webby as the the tape AD, and that's really where you learn the nuts and bolts of the broadcast. You you learn what he does and his camera directing. And I would spend a week and just watch camera one for like a week, and then just watch camera two for like a week, ten days, like really long, long time. Because the best way to learn from Webby was just to watch him do it. You know, and one of the things about being the tape producer is you really got to just you were there every night. And you, and you would, I would watch how he would do it, and I would watch the good camera guys, the bad camera guys, the home games, the road games, and I would listen to how he would react to different situations. So in my mind still, depending on the situation, I can, I can kind of hear Webby and, and sort of think back to, oh, he did this in this situation, and he did that in this situation. So being back in the tape room for all those years uh, was it, it, totally an invaluable experience, yeah. Is there something special about the New York audience and uh, the relationship that they have with the production team that brings them the Met games? Absolutely. I mean, I, it obviously starts with the guys in the booth, with Gary, Keith, and Ron. They're just beloved. But I couldn't. When I first took the job, it was amazing to me how many people would say, "Oh, the, the name Bill Webb. I recognize that name." Even we had Jerry Seinfeld on in the booth one time, and Webby got in his ear and said, "Oh, hey, Jerry, it's Bill Webb in the truck." And they hadn't met or anything. But he, Jerry Seinfeld, I'll never forget this. He, he goes, uh, he goes, Bill Webb. I, I remember hearing that name. So I think that's unique, and I'm not sure that that will ever happen again. But there's definitely the the, the love in the booth with Gary Keith and Ron. That's. Uh, been consistent throughout Mets history, whether it was those guys or Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner. That broadcasting lineage, I think we always have tried to be a part of. And Webby was really that bridge to the generation that came before S and Y. And so, obviously, it started with the announcers, but Webby had a big part of, I think, creating that connection with the the viewers. So I started working with Webby in 2006 when SNY uh, was launched and took over. Uh, and so I've been with them since their launch. This is our 12th season. And I started filling in for Webby maybe 2009 or 2010 just with the home games. And then the next year they'd give me a few road games. And the year after that I'd get some more home and road games when he would go and do the Fox national games. So I slowly would fill in for him first at home and then a little bit on the road and then a lot on the road. And then as his number of games, as he chose to do fewer games, they would give me uh, the difference. Have you been getting uh, acknowledgement now within the industry and maybe within the fans having done this uh, in your own right for the last couple of years? Well, I think I think the greatest thing that I got the last few years is is the transition kind of going unnoticed. Like I think the I, the the fact that Mets fans were used to such a high standard of a broadcast and that we were as a group able to handle such a difficult time and transition without the viewers seeing any discernible drop off in the coverage. The fact that the people at home wouldn't know that he's there one day and I'm there the next day. I, I think that um, is the biggest thing. Uh, Webby directed the uh, All-Star Game and the World Series games. 
Do you necessarily step into those shoes? No, that's a totally. I mean, I would, I would love to do the World Series one day, but I, um, I'm. I got to do these games every night. The one thing about regional baseball is you get to do it every night, so you get to get really good at it. Um, that may be a place where I hope the power of the New York market may be able to help one day, but absolutely not. No, Webby's uh, deal with Fox was totally separate from this, and uh, they have some great guys over at Fox that are going to step in. And, and John Moore, the Yankees director, does a phenomenal job. He did the last couple World Series. Um, John does a fantastic job. So um, this is completely separate from that. You travel, like you travel with the Mets for their away games. Uh, do you get any uh, feedback from other crews, people who, who knew him? Yeah, I mean, everybody everybody knew Webby. I mean, especially in the baseball circuit, the baseball world especially. So it's been important. Every, every city we go to, the first night that we're in, I always bring all the camera guys together for our meeting. But more important than the camera assignments is I, I like to take a minute on the day where everybody's setting up and really busy to kind of take a minute and just acknowledge Webby and that he's not here, but that the game is still covered, like I said to you before. The, for those guys, it's a very tangible thing. It's not just a philosophical thing. How he covered the game is how we're going to cover the game. So for the camera guys, the assignment is the same. But... Um, you know, everybody's got a story about Webby. We have hundreds. We He comes up every night in the truck, the camera guys. Um, when we get to a new city, they all have known him for longer than I did, and they all have stories. So he's very much w with us every night. Were there poignant moments between the crew and him as his uh, illness progressed? Well, anybody who knows Webby knows he doesn't do nostalgia. So I wouldn't say there were any poignant moments necessarily. Um, it was very, very difficult for a lot of people. It was a, last year was very difficult, but it's Webby. So no, was there a moment where he put his hand over my shoulder and said, take it from here, kid? Absolutely not. And anybody who knows him knows that that would never happen, nor would I expect it, nor would I want it. That's not, that's just not who he was. Yeah. Two to three months uh, after his passing, he still held. Oh, he, that will that will be for we we will all be telling webby stories for the rest of our careers i mean that is just the truth i mean he yes <laughs> he is still held in extremely high regard i mean i just from learning from him and being in, in tape all those years i mean my cadence when i direct the game is similar i've had guys come up to me after games on the road and be like god you kind of sound just like him like my my cheesy jokes are stolen from him i mean it's all and that's just part of you know i learned from him i like i said i was back there for a thousand games so it's just how i heard him is how i learned to do it so yeah i mean we he like i said that he he comes up every whether he comes up or a joke he would always tell or a one-liner or a little thing he he comes up every single night did he ever give you any indication that he knew he was passing the baton or uh, that his students were carrying his style forward? Yeah, not really in the last couple years when he was sick. Before that, you know, Webby did a lot of teaching at the hotel bar. That's really where you would where you would pick his brain and, and learn things. Like, obviously, I would watch him, like I said before, when I was in the tape room. But at night, when we get back to the hotel, when we were on the East Coast, one of these West Coast games would be on. And I remember in L.A. one time early on in 2007 or eight, he just nudged me and he said, uh, call the game like you're calling the shots. That game that's on TV right there. So I, would, I felt kind of foolish, but I would say, okay, ready, one, take one. All right, why'd you do that? All right, ready, eight, take eight. And he, whether he admitted it or not, he really liked mentoring the next generation of directors. He would get you to a point, and then when, you know, you had to start learning on your own, there was never a moment where he's like, okay, now it's, you know, run with it or take it or whatever. There was none, never on any of that. But he, the fact that he taught a lot of guys, I think, is, is evidence enough to the fact that he liked mentoring that. I joke about Webby's, you know, John Wooden's coaching tree. I joke about Webby's directing tree. He has a few former technical directors. He has several ADs who he taught or he who he worked with that have picked up his style. So there, there are, yeah. yeah, I think he, I think he will always live in all of us. <laughs> I do.